Hello everybody and welcome to AEW Revolution 2020. I am CR Daredevil bringing you all of the live action for this show. It is going to be a big one. That main event with Pac defending the AEW World Championship against Jay Lethal. We've got the tag team titles on the line as the Dark Orders, Evil Uno, and Sue Grayson defend the titles against the Young Bucks. We got the women's world title on the line as the Bunny defends against Alexis Kaufman. We also have a lot of other grudge matches happening tonight. Brian Cage and Kenny Omega one on one. We have Tennille Dashwood and Priscilla Kelly one on one. We got the big six man tag, the Dynasty taking on Shane Strickland and Jurassic Express. And we, of course, have Chris Jericho going one on one with John. Moxley, uh, I believe there's another match I might have forgotten in there, but yeah, there you go. So, revolution happening tonight. There is going to be a little bit of a pre-show for it. The buy-in, if you will. Um, we are at a sold-out Memorial Arena in Jacksonville, Florida. 15,000 in attendance for the show. Uh, we start things off with a segment where we see El Generico leaving the hospital. Um, he had to go to the hospital after this past dynamite and it turned out that he suffered a broken finger uh but uh as he's leaving the hospital we see marty martinez creepingly watching on kind of hiding behind a car in the parking lot as generico is leaving the the, the, the uh, hospital 48 rating as we're continuing this storyline with these two here we do have two matches on the pre-show um going to be continuing a couple storylines going on we are having the rubber match between Frankie Kazarian and Angelico. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see. And then we also have a tag team matchup that uh, Tony Khan announced on social media. Uh, is going to be Angel Williams and Ashley Lane taking on Hikaru Shida and a partner of her choosing. Of course, you know, the issues between Lane and Shida have been building up recently. So we're going to see who uh, Shida's partner ends up being. 52 rated matchup here. That sees Hikaru Shida and her partner Riho defeat Angel Williams and Ashley Lane in 958 when Shida got Williams to submit to the Shida X Queen. 52 rating for the match. Pretty good stuff there. 53 from Shida, 50 from Ashley Lane, 47 from Riho, and 40 from Angel Williams, who seemed off her game. We advanced the storyline, so Shida gets the victory, but it was over Angel Williams, so it still kind of teases the idea of the eventual one on one matchup between Shida and Lane. But there you go. Nice little uh, thing there. Riho teaming up with somebody other than her usual tag team partner here. But, you know, she uh, liked Riho enough to team up with her tonight and got a 52 rating, which isn't too bad. Would have been a decent, uh, could have been a decent main show match too here. Then after that, we go backstage. We have a promo from Three Leap, Kyrie, Mayu, Io, um, kind of talking about how Mayu's recovering from her injury and all that stuff, but they're, you know, they're still looking to, uh, you know, they're still wanting to continue to prove why they are three, why they are elite, why they are three elite, if you will. When Mercedes interrupts them, um, it's only got a 45, which I guess so. Um, Mercedes interrupts, says, listen, Kyrie, you, uh, you and I seem, you know, you seem to be having a problem with me. So I'm not sure why I'm just out here to beat everybody in the women's division, prove why I'm the boss of it. But if you want to do this thing, you name the time and place, we'll do this thing. So kind of a response to the uh, interruption from Kyrie the other day on Dynamite. Kind of uh, teasing the idea that they're going to have their one-on-one matchup here in the near future. 45 rating for this segment here. I'll see you for the storyline, but that's fine. We'll make that up. And then our pre-show main event, if you will. Uh, sees Frankie Gazarian defeating Angelico in 1109 by pinfall at the Flux Capacitor. 60 rating for the match. Really good match rating there. 57 from Kazarian, 54 from Angelico, ending the storyline. So the storyline's kind of over here. Um, I do have slight plans for both of them heading forward. Like, I have plans, but they're not, like, major storyline plans. Um, but I kind of wanted to put an end to this. You know, in the, in the end, even though Kazarian won the, the best of three series that ended up being between these two, um, and Helco still proved himself, still proved that he could go with, uh, Kazarian and, you know, it was kind of one of those things that Kazarian kind of gave him a nod 
of respect before leaving. 57 from Kazarian, 54 from Angelico. I'm sure we will see both more of both of them in the future. Then we get to the main show itself. We get a Revolution opening video package. Kind of going over some of the matches tonight. Cage and Omega, the big six-man tag. Dashwood and Kelly. Jericho and Moxley. Gets 54 rating for this. After the video package, we go backstage where we have Tommy End um, speaking with the Dark Order around him. Saying that tonight, just like it has been for months now, tonight will be another night where the Dark Order will continue to reign supreme here in AEW. Uh, 48 rating, not bad. Slowly trying to get Tommy End a bit better uh, entertainment skill-wise. Of course, Tommy End has the match against Cody Rhodes, which is actually going to be opening up Revolution um, right after this promo here. Uh, the Bunny, of course, defending the Women's World title tonight, and Evil Uno and Sue Grayson defending the tag team titles. So, could it be another night for the Dark Order? Can they go 3-for-3 three three tonight? Well, first off, they go 1-for-1. One one. As in a decent matchup, Tommy End defeats Cody Rhodes in 14-20 by pinfall to Black Mass. 65 rating for the match, 68 from Cody Rhodes, 54 from Tommy End. Really good stuff there. Cody, Cody stumbling again. Cody taking another loss on pay-per-view. It's kind of a, you know, he lost to Adam Cole at breakdown. Now he lost here at Revolution. Like, Cody's got to, we got to figure out what Cody's going to be doing heading forward here. 65 rating for the match, though. Really good stuff here. Um, Cody was better in-ring performance, but our performer, but I still wanted to have Tommy End go over. Because uh, I'm still kind of pushing him. He's undefeated so far in AEW. He's, you know, becoming this threat in the company. Um, but there you go. 65 rating for the match. Really good way to start off the show. And after that, we get a best friends promo. Um, Andrew Campo interviewing the best friends who are talking about their issues with, um, with the prisoners of war recently and about, you know, how, uh, the prisoners of war can sit there and claim that they have a bond, but everybody knows the best friends have the best bond of all and then uh you know orange cassie does his little pose while trend chuck do a hug around him kind of thing camera pans over and you see martina partying in the background just having fun doing a solo party in the background there gets 36 rating here not great but you know gotta build up their entertainment somewhat martina i wanted to kind of make sure i stuck her in, in something today because i wanted to keep her uh her popularity going and all that kind of stuff because she's actually we got her up to recognizable now so that's good but uh she's just you know she's having fun partying up she's just jamming out doing what she wants to do 55 rating for this match as in about that subpar wrestling little heat shane strickland and jurassic express defeat the dynasty in 1104 when strickland pinned richard holiday with 450 uh holiday was a weak link he had a 31 he was really off his game too so if he was if he had actually Performed up to his normal standards, he probably would have been at least a little bit better. Uh, 48 from Wardlow, 49 from MJF, 41 from Luchasaurus, 57 from Jungle Boy. What the hell? <laughs> she just randomly jumps up in in-ring performance all of a sudden. And 58 from Shane Strickland here. 55 rating for the match is pretty good. Um, yeah, I, Jungle Boy just suddenly having a hell of a performance all of a sudden there. Uh, you know, maybe he just maybe he was looking like the star in this matchup kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, Shane Strickland and Jurassic Express getting a victory over the Dynasty. Of course, this wasn't, uh, you know, Strickland didn't pin MJF, and uh, it wasn't a one-on-one match, so you got to imagine that Strickland and MJF are still going to go one-on-one in the future. But for now, Strickland and the Jurassic Express get the victory. We'll have to see what happens with that hanging forward. 55 rating here for this match. Then after that, we have an interesting little segment backstage. Only got a 45 rating. Kind of a little disappointing, but that's fine. As uh, Dr. Burt Baker sees uh, Hangman Adam Page walking down the hallway and well, kind of distracts him. She's sitting there talking to him, kind of mocking him. Like, oh, you disrespect. Oh, you going to cry about some more disrespect, all that kind of stuff. And Hangman just tries his best to try to ignore her. But uh, but uh, regardless of it, it's still enough of a distraction for Adam Cole to come out of nowhere and just all of a sudden jump Hangman Adam Page and start brawling with him backstage. And as security officials are trying to break up those two, all of a sudden, out, out of the corner, or out of the uh, out of view, all of a sudden, Kaylee Ray comes running in and attacks Dr. Britt Baker, and they're brawling with each other. 
So there's a big old brawl happening between these two, uh, between the two guys and the two women here. Uh, 45 rating for this. And uh, we'll have to see what uh, what that leads to in the near future. But these, uh, you know, issues between Baker and Ray, obviously. And issues between the Adams, Paige and Cole. We'll have to see where things go from there. Then we get a quick video package. Young Bucks in the Dark Order. Young Bucks kind of, you know, going over their time here at AEW and kind of briefly talking about how they lost it all out, but they plan to turn things around here at uh, Revolution. And, of course, the Dark Order just continue to have their dominance, you know, just telling people to uh, either join them or to fall at their feet. A 65-rated matchup. Good stuff there. Uh, the Dark Order defeat the Young Bucks in 152 when Stu Grayson pinned Matt Jackson with a fatality, making defense number three of the tag team titles. Evil Uno was a weak link. He had a 47. 62 from Stu Grayson and 68 from both of the Young Bucks. I gotta figure out how... I guess I just keep keep working on Evil Uno, keep trying to get his in-ring performance up there, but... 65 rating for the match. Really good stuff there. Both teams have an excellent chemistry together. Stu Grayson's got a hot new move. Nick Jackson's getting better at his gimmick. And the crowd got this match got the crowd hotter, so really good stuff here. Uh, but yeah, the Young Bucks failing once again. So you know, you gotta do they have to kind of look in, look into themselves and kind of evaluate things. I mean, they can't, you know, they can't seem to beat the beat the Dark Order. I mean, Nick Jackson beat Evil Uno on Dynamite, but the uh, the Bucks just can't seem to beat the Dark Order in a tag team matchup. So we'll have to see where things go from there. And after that. 54 rated segment here that sees the inner circle um, with a segment here. Jericho talking with Hager and Guevara says that uh, that the stipulations behind their matchup between Jericho and Moxley's matchup ends when that bell rings. And of course, because this is now a false count anywhere matchup, I don't remember if I announced it as such earlier or not, but um, it was one of those things that it kind of got suddenly revealed here as well. That uh, the Jericho says all he has to do is just make sure his boy's got his back. And Hager and Guevara kind of smirk before the three walk off. So 54 rating. It seems like Hager and Guevara are going to have uh, Jericho's back in that matchup. Uh, Guevara was very underwhelming. Guevara, you got to... I don't understand why you're looking very underwhelming when you have like a 70-something in charisma. What are you doing here? Whatever. Then after that... Tino Dashwood defeats Priscilla Kelly in 959 by pinfall of the spotlight kick. 50 rating for the match. 49 from Tino Dashwood, 36 from Priscilla Kelly. Probably could have been blown off on Dynamite, but I don't kind of, you know, this feud's been going long enough that I wanted to blow it off on pay-per-view. So Dashwood gets the victory. We'll have to see where things go for both of them heading forward. Because uh that's where things kind of end. You know, Dashwood gets the victory. She gets the overall victory, wins the feud, all that kind of stuff. 50 rating for the match, though. Color commentary gave the match a boost, so it could have been a little bit worse if it wasn't for Taz doing the color commentary. Then after that, brief little video package for Brian Cage and Kenny Omega. Kind of going over the few that they've had so far, as well as kind of their time in AEW so far. The match itself gets a 68 rating as Kenny Omega defeats Brian Cage. In 1427 by pinfall to V-Trigger. 68 rating for the match. 65 from Omega. 60 from Cage. Really good stuff there. Cage, you know, usually dominant. But he does end up taking the loss in this matchup here. Gained heat for the storyline. As you'll notice, it's not coming to an end. Because things are not done between these two. But, Kenny Omega get, does get the victory here at Revolution over Brian Cage. Then after that. We're supposed to have a match between Miro and Austin Creed, but uh, Miro jumps Creed before the matchup. He locks in his uh, the you know game over, which is what he calls the accolade, of course. Uh, he locks that in and uh, just refuses to let go. Officials come down to try to break things up, but Creed is in too bad of a condition to be able to have the matchup, and so Miro just kind of gets the match awarded to him by forfeit, I guess, so to speak. Or maybe, you know, it just doesn't end up happening. Who knows? Um, I chose to do it this way because I forgot that Miro and Austin Creed do not have good chem... They have poor chemistry uh, when facing each other. This was going to be a short match, but 
I just turned it into an angle instead because I forgot that they have poor chemistry. So got a 50 rating for this segment. And that kind of puts an end to things there. Um, you know, Creed might come for some sort of revenge in the future, but for the time being, Miro's the one who looks dominant after this feud here. Then after that, we get our brief little video package for Alexis Kaufman and the Bunny heading into the Women's World Title matchup here tonight. Gets a 54 rating. The match itself gets 61. I'll take it. Uh, I don't know why she won with the alley driver, but whatever. I might have to change the name of that. Uh, but in a decent matchup, the Bunny defeats Alexis Kaufman at 11.51 by pinfall. Making defense number two of the women's world title. 61 rating for the match. 57 from Alexis Kaufman, who, surprisingly enough, like, that's one of her better in-ring performances so far. And 51 from the Bunny. Gained heat for the storyline. Uh, of course, Rosemary was at ringside for the Bunny. And as you see there, Alexis Kaufman had Chris Statlander at ringside for her. She did uh, allow her stat to uh, to watch her back, and apparently they have great chemistry, so I might have to actually kind of keep that going heading forward. But uh, 61 rating for this matchup, really good match here, as the Bunny's able to win, uh, defeating Alexa Kaufman. We're going to say it's by underhanded tactics in a way, though. I didn't put it as an underhanded tactics thing, but we're going to say it's kind of like it. Um, stat and Rosemary kind of got into it somewhat, and... Uh, um, it was one of those things where Rosemary kind of distracted the referee enough for the bunny to actually spray Alexis Kaufman with mist. So this time, you know, instead of Rosemary doing the mist, it's, it was the bunny that did the mist this time. And Kaufman got hit with the with the the bunny driver, I guess we can call it, um, to get the three count. So kind of a little bit of a cheating way as the bunny had to kind of uh, resort to the mist to try to get the victory. Um, so interesting stuff there. 61 rating for this segment or for this match, though. Afterwards, we see the Death Triangle backstage. Pac warming up for his matchup here in the main event tonight. Um, and his former challenger, Matt Seidel, shows up. And, you know, Penta and Fenix are kind of look kind of eyeing him down. And Seidel's just like, hey, hey man, I just just want to say, I want to wish you luck. He extends his hand out. Pac uh, shakes his hand and, you know, kind of showing some respect there between the two of them. So, 60 rating here. Uh, this is basically me trying to get Seidel on, on screen. Um, I wanted to do the Death Triangle uh, segment, but I also wanted to make sure that Seidel got, uh, show, you know, showed up on the pay-per-view since I didn't have anything for him at the moment. So, there you go. Then after that, we get our Falls County War matchup. Gets 69 rating as John Moxley defeats Chris Jericho in the Falls County War match. In 1507 by Pinfall the Death Rider. 69 rating for the match. Very nice rating. Moxley with a 63. Jericho with a 61. Kind of surprised by those in-ring performances. I don't know what happened here. Uh, just inconsistency, I guess. So they just didn't do as well as they could have been. But Moxley gets the victory despite having Jake Hager and Sammy Guevara at ringside. Um, it, so here's how kind of this played out. So Falls County were match. They're, they're brawling all over the place. Guevara and Hager show up. And start being down Moxley. So it's a 3-1 beat down. Until all of a sudden, the Thrill Seekers, Andrew Everett and Trevor Lee, show up. Of course, you know, they've kind of had a, a little bit of a respect with John Moxley recently. So they show up, they chase off, and they start brawling with Hager and Guevara. Kind of turns back into a Jericho and Moxley one-on-one scenario. Um, and this was kind of like mid-match kind of thing. So it wasn't like the end. Like the last few minutes of the match was between Mox and Jericho. Like there wasn't really any outside interference. So Moxley gets a clean victory over Jericho, really, um, because everybody else got chased off throughout the match. But 69 rating. Storyline has not come to an end yet, so that probably gives you some hints of what's happening in the future for these two. Then, if my button wants to click there, there we go. We get a video package for the main event, Jay Lethal and Pac. Lethal kind of talking about how he's been a world champion uh, how he was a world champion in ROH, how he's been world champion all over the place, but tonight he becomes the world champion here in AEW. And Pac just kind of briefly talking about how he's always been seen as um, someone who shouldn't be world champion material, even when he even now, even as the world champion, people are still kind of underestimating him, and so he plans to use this match to continue to prove why he is the AEW world champion. These two go out and have a 76 rated matchup. Hell yeah. <laughs> Is it about that great wrestling decent reaction from the crowd? Pac defeats Jay Lethal in 1535 by pinfall the corkscrew shooting star press or his 
Black Arrow, if you will, um, to make defense number two the AEW World Championship. Uh, you'll see a note there. So here's how this goes out. Here's how this happens. Okay. Um, Truth Martini, managing Jay Lethal, of course, at this point, um, is striking the referee. Lethal gets the championship. He's getting ready to lay out pack with it. Um, but suddenly somebody, somebody enters the ring and grabs the championship from him. You know, crowd goes nuts as they enter the ring because, of course, he's not hiding himself. It's Samoa Joe. Um, he grabs the championship from Lethal. Lethal turns around and just suddenly looks shocked, just looks completely in fear because, of course, he's running from Le Joe, from Samoa Joe recently. Um, Joe just stands there, smirks at him. He doesn't actually touch him. He just smirks at him and just kind of waves at him. And this causes Lethal to turn around and get laid out by Pac. Um, Pac goes up top. Hits the corkscrew, corkscrew shooting star press, or the black arrow, if you will, and gets the victory. 76 rating for the match. Very good stuff there. Pack with an 80 entering performance. See, like this, you know, for anybody out there who's like, man, why is Pack the world champion in your thing? Like, you got Jericho, who's really popular. You got Moxley, who's really popular. You got all these other people who are really popular. That 80 entering performance right there from Pack is why he's the world champion, because he is the best entering performer in our company right now. Um, and 75 from Jay Lethal. I knew these two were going to have a banger of a matchup. That's why I really wanted to make sure that they had this on pay-per-view here. But uh, yeah, Pack gets the victory. And uh, we're continuing the stuff with Mo Joe and Jay Lethal. Eventually, they're going to have to have a one-on-one -on -one matchup again. Um, Joe, you know, just continuing to get in the head of Lethal after, you know, being pissed off about the fact that Lethal won underhandedly at breakdown. So we'll have to see what ends up happening with that. But yeah. Pack makes defense number two of the world title. 76 rating for the match. Great way to end the show. In fact, it was so good of a match that uh, Excalibur was actually weak at the commentary desk. <laughs> That's how good it was. So it could have been better if Excalibur was better, apparently. Show itself gets a 70 rating. Look at that. Increased popularity in 53 regions. Uh, apparently we had growth restriction in three American regions. The main event definitely helped save the show. Um, it was a pretty good show regardless. Like, I thought it was a pretty good show for us. Um, a lot of really good matches. Omega and Cage had a 68. Mox and Jericho had a 69. You know, the tag title match was a 65. So, you know, a lot of good matches on the show, but that main event definitely propelled us up to that 70 rating. We probably would have had, like, an upper 60s if it wasn't for that main event being as good as it was. So, there you go. There is uh, Revolution 2020 happening there. All the champions retain their titles. But uh, we're going to have to kind of see where things go. I mean, you know, Coffin kind of lost in a, I don't want to say a cheap, well, not, you know, not necessarily a cheap way, but at least kind of a tainted way. I mean, she got missed it in the face. Um, the Young Bucks, we're going to have to see where things go from them. I mean, they they lost again to the Dark Order. So where do things go from there? Kenny Omega got the victory over Brian Cage, but, you know, is Brian Cage going to take that lane down? Is he just going to be willing to accept that defeat and move on? Or is he actually going to keep coming after Omega? Uh, Mox was able to get the victory over Jericho. You got to imagine that Jericho and the inner circle are not going to take that line down. Um, you know, and, and even with, uh, with lethal, I mean, lethal, you know, you know, to, you know, despite the fact that it was underhanded, lethal could have had the world championship. He could have won that title. It wasn't for Samoa Joe showing up and chasing him off. So we will have to see how things go there. Sorry, I got distracted for, for, with something here. Huh. All right. Anyway. Uh, feedback has been great. Drawn a lot of praise. Very good stuff there. Very good stuff there. Not Chris Mordetsky. Oh man, he got hurt. Um, right. I did. Th I so I will say I did consider trying to steal Tony Nese from WWE, but his performances and how much money I was going to have to try to pay him just didn't work out. Um. I don't know why he didn't have a picture there, but like, yeah, he wanted 
44. He wanted basically about 4,700. Um, he was already 34, and his in-ring performance, he had a 36 in-ring performance in his last matchup. So I was like, ah, I don't really want to pay somebody almost five grand for, you know, that kind of tier level. We already have enough people on our roster that don't, uh, that, uh, you know, we're paying less for that kind of rating, so. Or for even better than that. Ring of Honor happened for some reason on a Saturday. I'm not sure what happened there. I guess, I don't know. I don't know. Well, that's where Mordeski got hurt. It was in that tag match. Anyway, ratings-wise, uh, we were fifth on the night. 8,255 people watching on Fight. That's not bad, honestly. That's not bad. We had the second best show, rate, show of the night. Uh, of course, we were going up against a New Japan show, so that didn't help us. Culture Shock 2020, which saw Tanahashi defeat Toriyanu in the main event, which is awesome. Um, looks like all the titles were retained there. Um, Ice Ribbon. Ice Ribbon had 137,000 people watching. Wow. Good for them. I'm kind of surprised that Sheeta wasn't on that show. Or did I? I might have signed her an exclusive deal. I don't know. ROH there, WXW, us, Smash. So, you know, a lot of shows happening there, but so we didn't have as you know as high of viewers as I was hoping, but uh but I'll still take it. I'll still take it. Let me uh do that really quick because I don't want to spoil something that is gonna be happening. So uh Revolution is our tied for our second best show of all time. It's number three on here, but the top two are you know two dynamites that were that have the same rating so it's tied for our second match show of all time which i will gladly take um top matches of all time pack and jay lethal third best match in AEW history there um any other ones from revolution up there no there's not although to be fair um those last four are 69s which means if i scroll down yeah mox at jericho is 21st there um Omega and Cage right there at 24. Uh, Tommy End and Cody Rhodes at 31. So, you know, there's their, you know, Dark Order and Young Bucks, 34. So a lot of matches were right there in the top 50 for us. Um, 15,000 for our attendance. Apparently we sold out. Re Revolution managed, managed to sell at the same arena two straight years. <laughs> that's that's kind of funny. Um. Pay-per-view buy rates. That was our best buy rate we've had for pay-per-view. Um, yeah, 8,255 viewers, which was higher than All Out, which had 6,279. So look at that. Uh, most uh, pay-per-view buy rates, or most pay-per-view buys we've had so far in the series as well. So honestly, a really good show. A really good show indeed. Um, you know, could have been better, obviously. But hey, I will gladly take it. I will gladly take it, and crazy enough, I'll show you guys this because I don't think I've really shown this too much. Um, we kind of have a bloated roster uh, with a lot of people making a lot of money, and so we've been kind of losing money the last six, like, seven months, but so far this month, with one day left in the month, we're actually set to make money this month, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah, as you can see there, we've been kind of dropping a fair amount of money the last few months or so um a hundred percent because of our workers we have we are spending way too much on our workers compared to what what we're making profit wise um i could get rid of some people i could try to get you know change that um especially since we're spending as you see here this month we're spending six hundred thirty five thousand dollars on worker costs um but uh but you know what? I'm not worried. I'm not worried about it because we'll make that up. Um, we'll get the money back for sure. Um, and the workers who are, you know, spending a lot of that money, so to speak, are ones that I want to have around. They're ones who, you know, I want to uh, continue to see. Um, you know, they're the ones that are going to be stars for us and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, we just got to, you know. We just gotta keep uh keep working on it. We gotta keep working on getting ourselves uh to a better you know a better point in and uh where we start making more money and all that stuff, which we're starting to do. We are starting to do that. I'll you know admit that. So, but that is gonna do it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you are all you know enjoy the show. 
and hopefully you're excited for our next episode, which will be Dynamite.